A good dinner of Shabbos to all of you. I wanted to wish you all a beautiful Shabbos and share a thought with you in honor of the Rebbe's 28th yard site. 28 years since the passing of the Rebbe on the 3rd of Tammuz, which will be tonight, Shabbos. So, usually I drive to New York or I take a train, but during the summer, it's hard for me to get away. We have a big camp, and although Gurley runs the camp, I help her with it. So I really wanted to be at the Rebbe's graveside with 10,000 other Hasidim for Shabbat. So I booked myself a ticket, which was going to take me to New York. It was a 3 o'clock flight today. And I got to the airport at 1.45. We got onto the plane. And to make a short, long story short, we kept on being delayed and delayed. Then they got us onto the runway. We were the next plane to take off. And then they shut down LaGuardia again for the third time. And the plane was going to take off at 8.17 p.m., which is, of course, Shabbat. Now, why did they shut LaGuardia? I think the storms, no one knows about it in New York or here, but I guess the weather and the winds and the traffic. So I went over to the pilot. And I said, I need to get off the plane because I won't make it in time for Shabbat and I can't be on a plane for Shabbat. I need to get back home. So they drove back to the gate and I got off and took an Uber back to my home and many other people ended up getting off, but that's a separate discussion. But you know, we say in Yiddish, Mensch tracht und Gott lacht. We think and God laughs. I really wanted to be in New York, but I guess God really wanted me to be here for Shabbat. And maybe because it's a special Shabbat, and I belong with my community and show tomorrow for bringing, talking about how we could continue the Rebbe's legacy of love, of caring, of devotion to everybody and to all. Now, many of you know that I grew up in New York at the Rebbe's feet in Crown Heights. And the Rebbe impacted me in tremendous ways. And I wouldn't be where I am and my children wouldn't be who they are if not for the Rebbe's care and love. And I wanted to share with you a story that I saw today that really epitomizes to me the Rebbe's vision and maybe a little thought on the Torah portion. Rabbi Moshe Feller is the Chabad rabbi in Minnesota. He went there 50 plus years ago, nearly 60 years ago to start Chabad. When he first arrived, he was once interviewed by the newspaper and they asked him what he's there for. And he told them that he's in Minnesota because he's there to wake up and inspire the Jewish people towards their Judaism. Imagine this was right after the Holocaust that decimated Jewry worldwide. And the Rebbe had sent emissaries all over the world to impact the Jews and to inspire them and warm them towards the Yiddish guy. And Rabbi Feller told him a story that the Basham Dev actually says, you know, if someone, heaven forbid, faints, passes out and you want to wake them up, one of the things you do is you go to their ear and you whisper in their ear and you tell them their name to remind them who they are and hopefully you can wake them up. So Rabbi Fella said that just like when someone faints, you mention their name to remind them of who they are. So he says when the soul faints, when the soul is not connected to where it has to be, you have to scream their name to wake them up to their Judaism. And that's what he's there for. After he finished the interview with the paper, he wrote in a note to the Rebbe telling the Rebbe the story of what he did, what he said. And the Rebbe approved of what he said, but the Rebbe changed one word. He had written Litzok to scream. And the Rebbe crossed it out, and the Rebbe said Lilchosh to whisper. And it might just be one word. But with that little one word, the Rebbe gave the idea of who the Rebbe was. The Rebbe understood that we need to wake up and inspire Jews to become closer to their Judaism. But the Rebbe understood that the way to do it is through a whisper, not to scream, to pull, not to push, to lift up, not to push down, to bring closer, not to push away. The Rebbe, through his vision, through his positive way of looking at the world, through his unconditional love, for every single Jew and every human being literally revitalized and made a renaissance of Judaism 
after the Holocaust. Until today, you won't find a Jew anywhere in the world that is not somehow impacted by the Rebbe's vision, by the Rebbe's emissaries, by the Chabad rabbis and Rebbitsons, by his teachings, by his wisdom. And I'll give you one example. We all know the story of Korach. Korach, we tell you, was a power-hungry guy. He wanted to be the head Cohen, the high priest. He was upset that Aaron got the job. And he created a rebellion against Moses. But it's quite interesting. We all know Korach as this bad person. But the Rebbe asks, first of all, why was the Torah portion named after Korach if he was a bad person? And also, what could we learn that's positive? And the Rebbe saw a positive part to Korach. Even though there was all the negative, the Rebbe says that imagine Korach. What did he want to do? He wanted to be the high priest. He wanted to become close with Hashem. He wanted to be able to serve Hashem in a greater way. So maybe he was wrong. His direction was wrong. His way he went about it. But think about Korach. He gave up everything. He jeopardized his life. He was affluent. He was successful. He was a wise man just to become close with Hashem. Tells us that we can learn something from Korach too. We can learn to always yearn to be close to our spirituality, to be closer to Hashem. This is who the Rebbe was. The Rebbe never called a hospital a Bet Cholim, a house of the sick. He always called it a Bet Rufua, a house of the healing. The Rebbe never called something a deadline, only a due date, because he didn't want to use a negative word. When the first soldiers, there was an organization called the Chait Sahal, the handicapped of Israel, and they came to visit the Rebbe. And the Rebbe, said that they shouldn't be called the Chait Sahal, the handicap, but Mitsuyane Sahal, the exemplary of that Sahal. These are people that aren't handicapped, but they are the ones that carry the Jewish people. And this is how the Rebbe, step by step, for over 50 years of his leadership, nurtured and revitalized Jewish life in America and throughout the world, to love, to positive influence, lifting up and not pushing down through always whispering in our ears reminding us to come closer to our spiritual source so as we get ready for Shabbos it's a very auspicious day light Shabbos candles before 8 or 7 today put on tefillin today if you could on Shabbos read a little bit of, his study, of, of the Rebbe's Torah which I just posted 10 of the best books that you can read or anything from our website of his wisdom study something do an extra mitzvah of course, if you're able to come to Shul on Shabbos to celebrate with me, so hopefully I can continue inspiring you and myself and all of us together to make this world, to bring it to the fruition of what God wanted when He created the world. A world where godliness is known, a world where there's peace and harmony and love. And as Maimonides finishes his magnum opus, Yad HaChazakah, and he says, Hashem kamayim time of the ultimate redemption the world will be filled with God's knowledge just as the sea and ocean is filled with water may it happen speedily in our days Shabbat Shalom